We're not going to be here long. Because <laughs> uh, I was really enjoying the sleep that I was having. Uh, wait. Sleep? What? I was enjoying the sleep. No, we're not going to be here long. We don't have that much to discuss. We're just talking about all three trilogies. Never mind, we're going to be here for a while. Yeah, I was going to say. We're, we're going to break it down in an award ceremony type of way. We're going to hand out awards for each trilogy. Sorry, take off right as you start, but got to start. Take it easy. I'll take it easy today. Have a good stream. Mm. So, guys, this is uh, uh, the Nerd Alert Star Wars Holiday Special. Welcome. Uh, let's kick this off with the usual intros, and then, uh, yeah, we'll come right on in, and we'll uh, see what we do next. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing next. This is an impromptu. Not impromptu. This is a, this is an un, not not like usual episodes. So welcome. I'm Dan. I'm Misty. And welcome to the Star Wars uh, Nerd Alert Holiday Special Extravaganza. Especial. Uh, celebration. See if the uh, if the chat bot's available. Boom! Chat bot is available. It's running. It works. It's good. We have merch. We have merch. She she wants you to know that always. And the and also the chat bot wants you to know that too. She is the chat bot. It's her. <laughs> it's her this whole time. I just all I have to do is just think about it and bam it. Appears. M Night Shyamalan twist. Misty. <laughs> Is the chat bot? So uh, we had a showing, uh, viewing today, viewing, showing. I don't know. It's ten forty-five. We went and saw Rise of Skywalker. I was not fucking around. I would not let Misty uh, make us late for this. Got away with that. Guess I'll type here since you thought I haven't been here the whole time. Jay Walker was. Uh, I didn't know you were here the whole time. I don't look at who's uh, here. Thank you for being here, Mighty. But yeah, we weren't late. We weren't late. We got. Hold on. We let me got go, this. I'm gonna thing. go get it. I'm okay. gonna go get it. Um. We spent seventy dollars in concessions. And and Dan will show you why. Um. So I do not have a Star Wars shirt on. Oh, you don't have your Star Wars shirt on either. No, no. I do not have a Star Wars shirt on because I do not own a Star Wars shirt. This is my uh, Stranger Things pretty damn good babysitter Steve shirt. Love this, but uh, next next time we do a Star Wars special, I'll have a shirt. <laughs> so, $50 included with our concessions. We got R2-D2, yeah. but he's not just an ordinary R2-D2. He also, <laughs> you're supposed to be able to pop his head open, and look at that. You pop his head open. There's popcorn. It's a hot corn holder. Put, you can put anything in there. You could probably put, I don't know if it would be airtight enough to put like coffee grounds in there. You of course you want to ruin this there. with coffee grounds. Look at that. Look saying, how big that is. She just, wants to put coffee got, grounds like, in there. bags of coffee for Christmas from my nieces and nephew. Of course you want to put coffee in there. No, we're anyway, putting candy up in this. I, I knew he was going to say that. Or potpourri. No, no. They didn't think of um, they didn't think of putting this back on in particular. It could be if you have a child and you get 
get it for them, it could be a piggy bank, I guess. It also uh, opens from the back in case you want to take, or if you need to, from behind. <laughs> How many sexual jokes can I make? <laughs> Must tell you Piggy YouTube. bank. Must tell YouTube that this is not a kid-friendly show. You have to do that now when you upload videos. Do you really? <laughs> to YouTube. Yeah, there's some sort of law or something. Um, <coughs> Oh, Great minds. Oh, Mighty said Piggy Bank too. I didn't even see it. I love it. Oh, I mean. <laughs> oh, he said, oh, I know ah. about the, about the child, kid-friendly thing. Mighty says, oh, I know. <laughs> so, this is just going to be your host for today's episode. Oh. $50 plus mac and cheese bites and two coffees at 10.45 in the morning. A lot. That was um, like $70 worth of concessions. Anyway. But we were not disappointed. Let's jump to that first. We Let's were not. jump to that first. Hold on. Where are we going? <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, by the way. Uh, so in our Star Wars, uh, um, in our Star Wars uh, uh, little what, what was it called? Promo. The promo video. Uh, our good friend William Sanamo. Uh, no, I'm not giving any spoilers. William Sanamo. Uh, and his family, the Humbugs, uh, did our song for us. There's yeah. his link to his band camp. Uh, they have a whole Christmas album called Hum for the Holidays 2. It's the most hilarious fucking thing I've ever listened to. It's, it's just awesome. so fucking funny. But let's, let's get no spoilers. No spoilers. We're just here to tell you how it is. Is it what Rotten Tomatoes... And everything you're reading online, is it that? No. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say this on behalf of the Star Wars entity in mm -hmm. itself. I think that Rotten Tomatoes and all these sites that are currently shitting on this movie, I think it has everything to do with who owns that movie, who owns the rights to the movie that it actually does over quality. I think all these sites, they have vested interest in other studios and other companies that we got to go after the company that has the most market share, that has the most money, that doesn't need uh, financial investment from small little websites and shit. They don't have to advertise with ad revenue. They don't have to. Everyone goes after the big dog. The big dog is Disney. Everything they do is suspect. Been saying Rotten Tomatoes ain't shit for years. Hey, I, Steph, on Eric's I name. Know. I have never, I have never been a big Rotten Tomatoes uh, fan. Anyway, I, I don't look at they it. They gave Dave Chappelle's special a zero percent. We can already discredit Rotten Come Tomatoes on. because Dave Chappelle's newest special got so low, and they were yeah. appealing to the PC demographic. So right oh, there, his, his net, yeah. So his Netflix, special. his Netflix special. So right there, as you can see, that's evidence that also, also Captain Marvel owned by Disney. Remember, they had to change Rotten Tomatoes because DC fans went in mm -hmm. there and fucking plugged down Captain Marvel. That's petty. Before Captain Marvel that's even so came petty. out, it takes skill to be more pretentious than IMDb. It really does. <laughs> it really does. Now, we went in there, and we've gotten to the theater with no expectation. Yeah. No expectation, even though we bought, like, a $50 R2-D2 pop can. Co <laughs> but that, that's just us. Yeah, we wanted to, to treat ourselves. Um, spoiler free, I've never seen websites be more wrong. And I think people that are jumping on the bandwagon of saying this movie is bad, I think this movie filters out... Who's a fan of Star Wars mm -hmm. and who really isn't? Like, who doesn't actually understand Star Wars? Yeah, if you understand Star Wars and you understand the Force, there must be balance with the Force if you understand that. If you understand what the Force is and what it means to have balance. Yeah. This is fan service all the way, but not in the Crisis Infinite Earth type of way, which we got to part three, and we were uh, like, fuck I this. Know, I fell asleep during part two, to I, be honest I got to, all the new movies do that, in my opinion. Fan service? Uh, um, 
I did. I Good did. evening, farting aunt. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Um, but yeah, uh, I was, I was in. Like I was, like I, I was. I sat down in my movie theater. By the way, I think it's fucking funny that Harrison Ford wanted out of this trilogy so he could do fucking CGI dog movies. We, I just love that. I think saw, that's so fucking hilarious. We saw <laughs> a trailer of that, but like, like my question is. Is like, what did he do with the Star Wars money? You know, what did like was is this just like something to do? And is it something to do? Is it? Like I think it's something to for do. Four hundred one k or I, don't I think know. it's something to do. I don't know why they're making dog it's, movies CGI, but whatever. It's like Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid had those those dog movies. Uh, freaking what's his name? Who used to play Peter in Heroes? Oh yeah, he yeah. He has a dog. He has had a dog, a dog right. movie. Just um, if you're bored in Hollywood, do you some dog Media. movie. Yeah. Do a dog movie, I'll do, bro. I'll do a dog movie. You pay me a thousand bucks a day. I'm good. But I was in. They do uh, so. Every Star Wars starts with the scrolling letter. I was in after the first paragraph. I was like, oh, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this movie is a lot. When you, when it, that's the only thing I'll say that is true. When people say it's a lot, it's a lot, but not in a convoluted way. Yeah, it's not. It's really not. If you look at if you look at what they're trying to achieve, it it it, it it's it makes sense that you're not going to stay in one place too long. You're not going to get comfortable in one place too long. You it's know, a chaotic. Like, it's a chaotic script, it, but, but it's organized. It's organized yeah, chaos. The pacing of the film is go is Oof. proper. The pacing of the film, I think, Ooh, is... Good. It is proper slack pacing. <laughs> it is um, proper slack I, pacing. I don't know. I, I mean, like, the first 20 minutes, the pacing was really good. The editing was fantastic. You know, the control I, I wanna was great. See, I want to see it, like, six or seven more times. And it kind of made Last Jedi, the, the one that everybody just hated, it kind of makes Last Jedi <laughs> very important. It makes Last Jedi very important to not only this trilogy, but mm -hmm. to the whole saga in general. Because as we were talking about what we had just seen after, I'd have to go back, like, well, mm -hmm. in Last Jedi, that's why this happened, mm -hmm. and that's why that yeah. happened. I really like this one. Yeah, so Farting I, Ant saw sweet. Rise of Skywalker and agrees sweet. with us. So, like, I really do think we got to just set place things like Rotten Tomatoes ablaze and IMDb ablaze like these these guys aren't reviewing movies fairly Rotten Tomatoes gave that the same rating as Phantom Menace and as you will see really? as you will see later on in this show uh, when we were debut one of our new segments that just is that is just so, not the case so just just to let to let everybody know our one or two viewers just to let everybody know Within the last four weeks, I think I started somewhere in the beginning of yeah, this month. Yeah, we caught her all up. I, I hadn't seen all of the Star Wars movies, so basically I've seen everything that's canon, movie-wise, except for Rogue One. And Clone Wars. You and haven't Clone, watched Clone Wars. Clone Wars, you know, I'm talking about uh, movie-wise. Well, no, I'm, just, I'm talking about canon-wise. You haven't seen Rogue One or Clone Wars, but you were, yeah. you were still able to sit through this new Rise of Skywalker, yeah. understand what was happening, and have it impact you as somebody exactly. who's been watching it since they were a kid. And damn, does this movie just really, yeah. like, <sighs> just fucking just boom, boom, but in good ways. Uh, uh, yeah. oh. Just, I, there were times where I was like, please, just stop. I need a break right now. And it just kept yeah. going. Uh, uh... It, uh, uh, not like Revenge of the Sith, because this is the last Skywalker, the last one, the Skywalker mm -hmm. saga. But Revenge of the S Revenge of the Sith, because we didn't know there was going to be a seven, eight, and nine. Revenge of the Sith put like a like, nice little bow on it, but this was this made you mad that it was over. I agree. Like I watched it, and as when the credits went up, I was just like, wait, we don't get we don't get another one. Fuck. Gosh, uh, I just we're gonna have to pick a pick a day, pick a show where we review this movie in depth because we had seriously. some great conversations about this. This and some great conversations. There are revelations. There are revelations in this movie. There are uh, like, just we can't we can't say anymore. We can't say anymore. I would, love to, I would anymore. love to say 
plenty of things, but I don't want to give anything and, away. Like, and, and I've talked to people that are like, that I, I told somebody yesterday, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go see uh, Rise of Skywalker tomorrow and this and that. And, and she, my friend was like, I'm not even looking at news articles. I'm staying off my phone. I don't want spoilers. Like, people are so adamant about that, and I understand that. Like, even if you tell me, like, oh, so-and-so does the movie, I'm like, well, I consider, like, you know... A, I mean, it's... I consider that a spoiler. It's easy to spoil... It's easy to spoil don't the prequels. T- it's easy to spoil the prequels, because you kind of know what's supposed to happen by watching 4, 5, and 6. With this being 7, 8, 9, with this being the last one, I mean, I mean, I walked in there going, what are they going to do what's it all mean, how does this, mm-hmm. how, where does this go, and just to find out what I found out and the revelations that were revealed, and I mean, I don't know what George Lucas's original outline mm-hmm. was, but judging with what he made from the prequels, we were going to get something shitty from George Lucas. He, let's just yeah, throw, let's been, just put that out there right the fucking home. now. Um, okay, we, we were going to get something <laughs> shitty from George Lucas. I extrapolate any tidbit of information, so if someone jumps in and says something, I'm leaving in me. No, no, no one's going to jump or, in and say anything. No, no. Spoiler free. And yeah, no spoilers. N- none no spoilers. at all. In uh, fact, we will move on to something yeah, else. But di- just final comments. Uh, if you had to rank, if you had to put this oh. in in your best, where, where do you um, rank this as far as Star Wars go, just overall? Not in this trilogy. In this trilogy, I will say it is the best one in this trilogy. Where do you say it overall? Top three? To, I, I would say top four. Top four, behi- behind uh, and in front. Okay, I, I'd said top three, so that probably means it would be number three or number four. Uh, uh, new, top four. New Hope. Um... New New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, or um, and and what's in front of it? I, I'm I'm oh, go go I'm go go, think, go. I, I'm trying to remember the freaking name of it. Um, Jedi? No, no. S- Revenge of the Sith? No, not the prequels. Force um, Awakens. For, Force Awakens. Okay, so your New Hope, Empire, Force Awakens, Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Somewhere, uh, something like I that. understand why Force Awakens is three because you're reintroduced yeah. to all the characters and stuff. Um, y- y'all, I'm going Empire number one. Rise of Skywalker is my number two. My number two. Mm-hmm. That's just that's it, mm-hmm. plain and simple. Number two behind Empire, okay. with number three being Return of the Jedi, of yeah. course. But it made the number two. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, if I watch if I watch the movies again, I might have a different opinion because I there are a couple of them I kind of get mixed up in parts, just in parts. No. Because I literally watched the first trilogy what in in a week. Almighty's company just got there. Well, stay lurking. Hopefully, <laughs> stay lurking, Mighty. Um. Yeah. They're like I said, I get a couple of them mixed up. Um. Uh, in part in parts. We're going to get to the awards part of the trilogy. We're going to give awards out to each trilogy. But, um, and this won't have anything to do with the awards later on. Who was your favorite character in this movie? Without any details, your favorite character to follow in this movie. Wait. Just to follow. Just like when the camera got on him. My favorite character in Rise of the Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. Who, to you, had the most interesting shit going on? Um, I would say, um... Keep lurking. Thank you, Mighty. Kisses. I would say Ray with a close, se- close second being Kylo Ren, though. Okay. Um, that's another thing. That- Hold on. We can say that. Adam fucking Driver he- in this movie. Holy he fucking shit. It. He brought it. That's Not, all we can say. That's all we can say. But no, he just, he brought it. The third trilogy in general, just, he brought it. He, he this, this third movie. Everything's fucking, put into context. I I'm would, not going to say anything else. I would have to say, uh, I did care about Ray when the movie started, yeah. and then in the first five minutes, I was like, oh, okay, so that's that thing going on. I wonder what, what. What Kylo Ren's up to. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Kylo Ren was yeah. my favorite one to follow because it was just like... <sighs> <laughs> I wish we could vocalize, uh, but we can't. I wish, 
I wish I could say I wish I could say more things. We but can't. I can't. We so. can't because we respect. Uh, uh, um, but, but you guys need to see it. That's yeah. that's the main point. You guys need to see it. Um, we are gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna advertise some of our content on here. So we uh, we did last year. We went to Comic Con and yeah. there was a Star Wars exhibit. We're gonna show you a little bit of this Star Wars exhibit real quick, and then uh, we're gonna link you with our YouTubes. So here Sweet. we go. Uh, this was with going the Millennium Falcon and taking tours of the ship. Be right back. I miss those fucking sets now because, uh, like, ah. Uh, but yeah, that was realmovietoys.com. Um, anyway, you can guys, you guys can go and check out that whole segment, that whole everything we did at last year's Dallas Fan Expo over at our YouTube right there. I farted while, uh, <laughs> I farted while that scene was going. So it like Misty is being a great actress right now, uh, pretending it doesn't was... smell. But I'm caving, guys. It it is it is a holocaust over here. I it smells just... bad. I was going to um, friggin' uh, what's his name? Keep stabbing me in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie goes, oh god. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I was I was actually going to shout out to our friends at the Five Hundred First Legion. We there you have, go. We have, um, I have a couple of friends, Scott and Misty. They're, it, they are a part of... No relation. Um, yeah, no, n no relation. They're just friends I met at yoga, actually, uh, when I back when I did yoga. Um, anyway, they um, they work with the 501st Legion, uh, which is a nonprofit organization. So they, like, they have certain, they put together, it's, it, it's like you, they put together, like, Star Wars costumes, and everyone, like, has a costume. Um, and, and so, anyway, like, with certain ones, there are guidelines. I, we went to one of their workshops at Comic-Con, but anyway, they're super cool, um, very Star Wars related. They put together, it's like nationwide. Yeah. They put together charity events, um, and they're always at, like, the Fa Fan Expo Dallas. We see them every year, so we get to see all the cool costumes they put together. There was this guy who did Boba Fett, um... And uh, Super cool. another shout out to William Son uh, Sonamo and his family, the yes. Humbugs, for providing us our Star Wars music. Please go check it out. Bandcamp, their album is $5. It's holiday, cl holiday Christmas songs <laughs> oh my gosh. for $5. It is so funny. And then they get the jingle bells uh -huh. and they're whistling. I fucking just I, lost my shit. I want to make like a trippy music video for We do. For we want to make videos, songs, music videos like, for them. It, it would just be hilarious. All right. Should anyway. we, should we, you know what? We are going to do uh, the awards part of this. Wait, unless we had other things. We, we did should, not have I other mean, things. I was thinking we could just talk about each trilogy. We are going to, we are going to talk about them in a award ceremony format. Because I, that's the only way I could talk about this trilogy. In fact, it, in fact, with the prequels, we're going to hand out awards, and then I'm going to send you all to our new video segment that's going to be on our YouTube called The Best of the Bad uh, that I recorded in the span of, like, 22 videos in the span of 24 hours. And, and then I went and judged the funniest comic in Texas. That was a fucking trip. Uh, um, that's a... It's been a busy 48 hours for me. I make two videos, and then I had to go judge the biggest one of the biggest comedy competitions in Texas, one that I took runner up in, but I had to go judge it, uh, and we crowned Ralph Barboza, uh, funniest comic in Texas, as he should have deserved it. Congratulations again, my dude. Uh, I called it in February. That kid was so fucking funny. I saw him last February. He was so fucking funny. I was like, this guy's gonna win it, and he ended up winning it. But, anyways, the the prequels. 
Good God, what can you say about the prequels that hasn't been said about uh, every car crash? <laughs> Let me try that again. What, what can you say about the prequels that hasn't been said about potato famine? <laughs> you try one, you try one. What hasn't been said? Go ahead. What hasn't been said about the prequels that you could say about E. coli epidemic. Oh, I like it. It smells like an E. coli epidemic right now with the way I'm farting. All right. Um, best villain. Which villain in these three movies? Who do you think? Best villain. That's kind of a hard one. Um, really? Well, no, I like, okay, Darth Maul or um, Old Man. I'm going to have to go with Darth Maul. Darth, you know what the, I, can't, I don't remember the guy's name. Oh, Ray Park. The Count Dre, Dooku. Count Dooku. Dooku. Either either Darth Maul or Count Dooku. And the thing is, is that I I watched, uh, oh crap, Christopher. What's his name? Christopher, Christopher Lee. Lee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched him in, like, you know, old movies. He's the original Dracula, movies. yeah. He was in, like, not the original one. I mean, he, he in, is a Dracula. He was, yeah, he was, like, probably in a, he was in all the, like, Hammer films. Uh, movies like in the 70s and 80s and all that like the B movies and all that and I just love him for that because I really like a good B movie but when this guy's not in the apartment because he doesn't like him but anyway uh, Dooku or Darth Maul splash and, splash those movies are trash so Darth Maul there uh, can we talk about Solo just real quick yeah that, we can talk about Solo the twist the twist and the twist, the twist and Solo um it really got me hooked into Solo in this, like, I, I, I was enjoying Solo. I was entertained by Solo, but I was like, eh, it's really not that important in this Star Wars mythology, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Well, and then in Solo, they reveal that there's a group called the Crimson Dawn, and that that's who these bounty hunters work for, and that's who these evil people work mm -hmm. for throughout the film. And then it's revealed, uh, and I'm not going to say how, it's revealed that the leader of the Crimson Dawn is at this point Maul. Not Darth yeah. Maul, but Maul. Uh, Darth Maul, who has stepped away from the Sith and is not, That's he has awesome. power, but, and it really linked up with Star Wars Rebels very, very well. Um, but that was the best part about mm -hmm. Solo, which I'm glad, I'm glad we brought up yeah. Solo. But Darth Maul, and, and if I remember correctly, no, no, Darth Maul is not with mm -hmm. us during the First Order or anything like that. But Darth Maul, is definitely the best part. I feel like the best mm -hmm. part of this original trilogy, even though he was in one movie. Yeah. That was a very well thought of character. Uh, follows Greek mythology in that he's supposed to lose every time, and he knows he's going to lose every time, mm -hmm. and he just goes with the motions because that's what the Force wants him to do and all this shit. Um, but it's it's good. I fucking I, I Darth Maul best villain, best Anakin. Do you want to go Jake Lloyd or Hayden, Hayden Christensen? Hayden Christensen. Ooh. The, the, the reason why is because, like, the kids' the kids delivery is terrible. But the thing is, is that, like, no matter what, you can't, like, if you're an actor, you can't make up for bad dialogue, you know? Like, if it's written that way and the director wants you to play it that way, that's the way you, you have to do what the director says. Stephanie, I'm going to go ahead and uh, correct myself, because you um, are right. It was revealed in Clone Wars that Maul was still alive. I'm going to correct myself. Um, it is the first time you see Darth Maul in the cinematic universe since uh, yeah. Phantom Menace in a solo movie. I should correct myself. You are correct. Um, oh, that was Eric. Eric is right. It is revealed in the Clone Wars. I loved it. I loved Solo because it was the first time you see Darth Maul cinematically since Phantom Menace, and he's Maul at this point. But thank you guys for the... He's on the phone, I'm on the desktop. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Why aren't y'all in... Okay. <laughs> um, Why aren't y'all the, under the two different names? Don't confuse me. Why are y'all the same name? You know what? I'll figure out later. So you think Hayden Christensen. The reason why is because whenever he finds out his mom gets killed by sand people, that face that he makes is pure rage. Like that, like that was the one good facial expression he had. He, the kid didn't know his butt from a hole in the ground when it came to acting. So yeah, but I, I understand that part of it is script and direction, but you know what I mean? He's a kid. 
Uh. I'm gonna go with Jake Lloyd because, and the, there's only one reason. I feel like Jake Lloyd should get an award because the movie destroyed his life. The, I mean, we had a joke during our promo that he was gonna be here, but he's actually in prison. This movie wrecked him. He was in Jingle all the way. <laughs> He was in Jingle all the way I before tried, Phantom Menace. I tried to watch it. No. I tried to watch it. She that. did. I, I was like, what and, are you uh, doing? It was like catching a little kid watching porn. It was I like, was, what are you doing? I just wanted to watch some movie that I never watched whenever, like when it was in theaters and stuff. I never watched it. I was like, I wanted to watch it and laugh at it. I do that sometimes. I do that Jingle sometimes. all the way did nothing. He was fine. I wanted to see Arnold It was Star Wars. It was Star Wars that ruined his life. He couldn't go to school again. He was constantly getting bullied. Not to mention, growing up, he has to go to these Star Wars conventions where these Star Wars fans, the same kind of Star Wars fans that make that chick delete her Twitter, are now going up to a child at a convention and complaining about Phantom Menace. Yes, we're giving this award to Jake um, Lloyd. Well, I'm surprised Jake Lloyd didn't turn into a mass fucking shooter. Cause I'm like, I mean, Jesus. he looks like it in his mugshot. He had to deal with the midichlorians. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay, that is the dumbest. I see. I've heard that Hold argument on. before. The midichlorians. I've heard that argument before. I didn't know what it. Uh, I didn't understand until until watching the Phantom Menace, and I'm like, wait, are you are you kidding me? We watched. When we watched it this last time, we watched the original trilogy uh, first. So, um, four, five, and six, we watched those first. So, by the time we're watching, by the time we get around to Phantom Menace, Minotaurians, what? Are you freaking kidding me? Like, there's no mention of that. Like, that was just terrible on the part of George Lucas. That was a really idiotic move. I, what, what, I agree. Was he trying to make a political statement there? Like I, I don't know. Was it, you know? I don't know. Best one out of the three. Best one out of the three? Best one out of the three. I'm going to go with Revenge of the Sith because it's over after that. Like, that's it. George Lucas is like, I've, I've told my story. And then he just hands the rights off. It, it wraps it up. It's just like, here's how, here's how Luke was... Here's how Luke got to Uncle Owen. Here's how Leia got to Alderaan. And this is what happened to Anakin. And I even forgive the... No! I even that forgive so that. Bad. I forgive that. Because it's over. It's over at that point. Uh, gosh, it's, it's really hard. It's really hard to make er, this Eric uh, or Stephanie, I don't know which one is which, Just... is saying revenge... Joey Kyle, greetings. What's your Hello. favorite prequel uh, to Star Wars? We said it's a Sith. We also gave a spoiler-free review of uh, Rise of Skywalker. Go see it. That's our thing. That is our thing uh, that we're saying. Go fucking see it. Go see it. She ranked it number three, or number four, of, number her, four. of her favorite Star Wars movies. I rated it number two behind Empire. So, also ignore all the websites. Just go see the movie. Don't know. They all kind of blend together, which is true. That's, but I think yeah. Rise of Skywalker. I think Rise of Skywalker kind of takes its own. But it's whatever. Yeah. It's whatever. We already did. Anyway, get, Revenge I, of the Sith. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Okay, so those are awards for that trilogy. Now we want to show you some two videos that are gonna make you laugh. Yeah. One is the concept video. All right. So if you were watching like a DVD, this would be in the deleted scenes. It's the concept video of what I was trying to make for the YouTube channel. And then I was just like, I should just put this on Twitch. I should just put this yeah. in, in the Nerd Alert uh, uh, holiday special. And then the second video is actually done for the Nerd Alert Star Wars holiday special. Uh, they're two very funny videos. Um, let's just roll with it. This is called The Best of the Bad. Enjoy. Hello, fellow humanoids. This week, Star Wars is wrapping up the Skywalker saga. I thought it would be fun if we go back into the cinematic universe and pick out the best of the bad. That's right, the best of the bad, the worst of the worst, the most terrible scenes ever shot on camera and put into the final cut of a Star Wars movies, most of them occurring in the prequels. 
Okay, let's be honest. All of them occurring in the prequels. I'm Dan, this is Red Nebula Pictures, and we are taking a look back at Star Wars, the best of the bad. Our first scene comes to us from Attack the Clones, Episode 2. I think this would be better if I gave you no context of what was going on, and we just went right into it. So let's do this. Okay, first thing, right off the bat, all the scene transitions in this movie were done on iMovie. Prove me wrong. Obi-Wan! Hello, Dex. <laughs> George, George Lucas put a Waffle House in Star Wars. <laughs> and Obi-Wan knows the cook. <laughs> Take your seat, I'll be right with you. You want a cup of Jawa juice? Oh, yes, thank you. Jawa juice? What, th what the hell is Jawa juice? I needed more context. And after a Google search, I found a lot of results taking me to this picture. This is Jawa juice. Urine with a cinnamon stick in it. That's what Obi-Wan's gonna drink throughout this entire scene. And he was like not ashamed. He ordered it with no hesitation. You want some Jawa juice? Yes, yes, oh fuck yes, I want some piss. Yes, it's the perfect way to start any morning. Hey, oh buddy. <laughs> so, my friend, what can I do for you? You can tell me what this is. Well, what do you know? I ain't seen one of these since I was prospecting on Subterrell, beyond the Outer Rim. Can you tell me where it came from? Thank you. This baby belongs to them cloners. What you got here is a Camino Saber Dart. I wonder why it didn't show up in the analysis archives. Because it's a bad plot device. <laughs> you see, funny little cuts on the side that give it away. Those analysis droids only focus on symbols. <laughs> I should think that you Jedi would have more respect for the difference between knowledge and... <laughs> wisdom. Well, if droids could think, there'd be none of us here, would there? That was... that was a little bit racist against droids, but... They're machines. Whatever. Hey, judging by this shot right here, doesn't it look like Obi-Wan has had, like, sex with this line chef guy? I mean, look how he's looking at him. Look how he's looking at him. It looks like they, like, had a night in Coruscant that ended in some tugging. Is it just me? Just me? Just me. Camino, I'm not familiar with it. Is it in the Republic? No, no, it's beyond the Outer Rim. I'd say about uh, 12 parsecs outside the Rishi Maze. Should be easy to find, even for those droids in your archives. <laughs> These are Caminoans. Keep to themselves. They're cloners. Damn good ones, too. Cloners? Are they friendly? Oh, it depends. Depends on what, Dex? On how worse you want to make the plot of this movie. On how good your manners are. How big your pocketbook is. So close. <laughs> Be honest. You thought that was a transition from the movie. No, that scene transition was me. It just backs up my point. This is iMovie quality scene transitioning. But whatever. Two things I learned while watching this scene from Star Wars Attack of the Clones. One, George Lucas must have had like a friend who owned a diner and like died while George was writing the script. So George was like, I'm going to put him in the movie. And he put him in the movie to explain the location of Jango Fett. And it's, it's that. I don't know. No confirmation, but a good theory nonetheless. Two, Ewan McGregor deserves an Oscar. He really does. Not because of his performance as Obi-Wan, but because he didn't walk off the set in a scene like this and clock somebody and quit. Because I would have done that. Honestly. You and McGregor wouldn't have lost anything just doing that. He would have continued to do movies. He literally carried this scene and this whole trilogy of prequels on his back. He deserves an Oscar, a Kennedy Center honor, a Nobel fucking Peace Prize. 
Props to you, Ewan McGregor, and I wish I could say that this was the worst scene in the Star Wars cinematic franchise, but it's not. We've got many more to come. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time around for Star Wars The Best of the Bad. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the Nerd Alert Star Wars Holiday Special. I hope you enjoyed that first Best of the Bad video. It was just a concept. We're going to do a Twitch exclusive one right now of the next Star Wars Best of the Bad. This is coming to us from Phantom Menace. It's when Padme meets Anakin and Qui-Gon's trying to sell some stuff for parts. Anyway, let's just take a look. Enjoy. Hmm. Are you an angel? Not even three seconds in. Not even. Ladies, don't you just hate it when you're out shopping and you just get catcalled by a random eight-year-old? I mean, Jesus, Anakin. You could start with, hi, my name's Anakin. What's yours? But then you're going to come up, are you an angel? What's wrong with you, kid? And look at her face. Look at her face. Even her, even Allie Portman's face is just like, really? Now? Really? What? An angel. I heard the deep space pilots talk about them. They're the most beautiful creatures in the universe. They live on the moons of Diego, I think. Um, excuse you. Angels live in heaven, you little pagan. You're a funny little boy. How do you know so much? I listen to all the traitors and star pilots who come through here. I'm a pilot, you know, and someday I'm gonna fly away from this place. Him telling her that he's a pilot was like me in kindergarten telling the other kids I was a werewolf, you know? Like, I was just lying. I was just, I just needed attention, you know? Also, I thought I was a werewolf because I just, I was extremely hairy for my age. How long have you been here? Since I was very little. Three, I think. My mom and I were sold to Gardula the Hutt. But she lost us betting on the pod races. You're a slave? I'm a person and my name is Anakin. But you also a slave, though. I'm sorry. I don't fully understand. This is a strange place to me. Coming up here in a sec is one of the Jar Jar Banks comedy moments. I'm going to watch with you, and uh, I'm going to basically reenact the first time that I watched uh, this scene back in 1999. Hey! Hit the nose! I have 20,000 Republic Dactaris. Republic credits? Republic credits are no good out here. I need something more real. Like children. You give me children, I give you the parts you need, I think, huh? I don't have anything else, but credits will do fine. No, they won't. Credits will do fine. No, they won't. What, you think you're some kind of Jedi waving your hand around like that? I'm a Tidarian. My tricks don't work on me. Only money. No money, no parts, no deal. Yo, Jedi Schindler, you literally have a droid right next to you that you could trade for parts. And then we could just like, we could shorten this whole Tatooine scene up and, and, and just be done with it. But, but no, you're not, you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna do that. Wouldn't have lasted long anyways if I wasn't so good at building things. Smooth, Anakin. Real smooth. Way to impress her. Yeah, you know, if I wasn't so good at uh, building things, you know, I'd be killed by now. We're leaving. Jar Jar. I was thinking about some online comments I saw from Star Wars fans that hate the new trilogy and appreciate the prequels. I think about these comments as I watch the Jar Jar Binks Warner Brothers cartoon sound effect bullshit happening in the background of this scene. I think to myself, man, those online commenters should have their fucking fandom taken away. And if you ever see a comment like that, I appreciate the prequels. I want you to remember this specific specific scene, because, good God. I'm glad to have met you, Anakin. I was glad to meet you, too. 
And some career updates. Natalie Portman would, of course, go on to be an Oscar winner and the first female Thor in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Liam Neeson would start doing movies where he's, like, strangling people with, like, piano wire and shit. I don't know, really dark, weird shit. And Jake Lloyd, I think he's in prison. I don't know. I don't know where he is, but, like, he, I, it's bad. Best wishes, kid. Uh, anyway, awkward. This has been the Nerd Alert Star Wars Holiday Special exclusive of the best of the bad. Hope you enjoyed it. Now let's join Misty and myself in real time and see what's up next on the docket. And see what's up next oh, shit. on the docket. Yep, there we go. Hello. Hello. Okay, so Misty has now farted. Um, I did. Misty I did. has now farted. And uh, it's just it smells really bad over here. <laughs> <laughs> smells really bad. We hope you enjoyed so, those two videos. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> if you are a nose, our apartment is uh, is is nine eleven for noses. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what our apartment is. Nine eleven for noses. I know. Why so dark? You don't know the smell over here. Our dog has left the room. Our dog he has is. left the room over I, our farts. I wish I could see what he's doing right now. Uh, he's, um, he's probably vomiting. He's probably. He Ralphie so, has now joined us. We don't have the Ralphie cam hooked up, but we will uh, we, for the next episode. It's a new thing. But we're we, yeah, um, we're gonna have a Ralphie cam. Um, so best of the bad. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed yeah. it. Um, Joey said earlier that the new trilogy is worse than the prequels. Well, I just pointed out two scenes that aren't in the new um, trilogy, and I I think people really need to watch the um, prequels again. Because this new trilogy mm -hmm. is not as bad as the prequels. I mean, I'm sorry. J okay, so there are a few things that I wanted to to, sorry. to bring up about that I absolutely hated about the prequels. Little things that kind of stuck out to me. Okay. The first time we ever hear R two D two scream or or make any noise other than what was is, that noise again? Is the pre or the the prequels? Uh, <laughs> We hear R two D two scream. I think it was uh, for the. And no, I no, he screams in New Hope when the when the ship gets shot during the Millennium Falcon. Run. I don't remember hearing that. Well, he gets shot during the Millennium a, Falcon. I, I hate that sound. I I'm, do not like that sound at all. I think she. I think Misty's just being picky now. But <laughs> no, I'm just the way three PO walks. What is wrong with you? Okay, <laughs> three words uh -oh. or syllables. Jar Jar Binks. Oh, the yeah. first time I the first time I ever saw Jar Jar Binks was when I recently watched this the prequels. So ra that's so racist. Okay, okay. That's racist. Okay, okay, okay. The portrayal of Jar Jar Binks. <sighs> Anyways. That's my opinion. <laughs> that's my opinion. Okay. Well. I'm sorry, I'm getting off Facebook anyway, because I'm also responding to I comments wanted to, on Facebook. I wanted to bring, I mean, uh, I mean, also the poor acting on the part of Jake Lloyd, Hayden Christensen. And, uh, and, and, uh, okay, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give Jake Lloyd, because I feel sorry for him, and when you say he's a bad actor, it's not his fault. Ultimately, you know whose fault it is. Yeah, I know. It's, it's George Lucas's fault. That's who this is. George Lucas went, oh, you know, he doesn't have to, he doesn't really have to know how to act. You know, he's a kid. Let's just take some pressure. Because this is what uh, made him a criminal. This is what, <laughs> this is what uh, made Jake Lloyd a criminal. I can't hurt him any more than he's already been hurt right now. He can come over to our place and kill our dog. Uh, anyway, we, we can change the subject. I also the force, wanted to. The dark side of the force is strong with him. He's Anakin. Um, I also wanted to point out that. I, I wish Qui-Gon Jinn's character had had better dialogue because I, Liam Neeson's a solid actor. You do. I mean, I do you agree know, with that. You have Liam he Neeson didn't, he in didn't, here. He didn't get, you know, he, and this he is didn't pre, get justice. This is pre-wife dead. He's a good actor. This is before know? his wife is dead. So, like, he's in a good place and you have him, uh, I would assume, for a couple weeks I would have changed the script, given him some better dialogue, yeah. I, everything you, like that. Ewan McGregor is, you know, he, like you said, in The Best of the Bad, you know, he he kind of is the he glue. Carried, He's the glue that holds the prequels together. He, he really carried, is. He did. He carried this movie. 
I gotta go to the bathroom. But when we come back after this short little ad break, there it is. There's the trilogy that started it all. New Hope, Empire, and Jedi. Is this trilogy the reason, uh, the standard that we hold our Star Wars movies to? Are, are, are we just so in love with this trilogy that no other trilogy can be better than this trilogy? What if the prequels aren't bad? What if it's just this trilogy is too good? What if the new trilogy isn't bad at all? It's just this trilogy is too good. We're going to hand out awards for this trilogy. We're going to examine everything that happens in this trilogy when we come back. This is the Nerd Alert Star Wars Holiday Special, and this is a small ad break. Uh, if you are subbed, you're just going to get the Be Right Back screen. If you're not, you're probably going to see a commercial for, like, fucking iPads or something. At least the prequels aren't consistently horribly dull, or in the case of Episode Nine, rushed as all hell. A boring movie is worse than a bad one because at least the bad one is usually entertaining in some way. I don't see how it was boring. Are you talking... I don't see how Force the, Awakens was boring. I, I, you're I, talking about Force Awakens. But okay. we're going to talk about that because we're going to examine the new trilogy as well, so I'm glad you brought that up, but i got to do a quick bathroom break. So be right back, guys. All right, and we're back. Oh, yeah. I can shit like a goose, just in and out. I said that out loud. So, yeah. original <laughs> original trilogy. I mean, there's really only... Well, no, there's more than one villain in this. I mean, you got Jabba the Hutt, you got Vader, you got the Emperor, you got uh, uh, Bubba Fett, you got uh, the, the Yeti that attacks Luke Skywalker, the beginning of... Mm. Of, uh, of uh, uh, Empire. Empire, thank you. Uh, who do you think best villain? Best villain. Best villain. Of the original trilogy. I gotta say. I called him Bubba. I called him Bubba because uh, I'm Texan. I called him Bubba Fett. I'd say the Emperor. The Emperor? Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah, well. Hmm. Knowing what I know now. Hmm. Or or okay. What if what if we just look at if we just just are we looking at just know. within the trilogy? Are we looking at just within the trilogy? Then, well, I mean, can't give it to Vader. Yeah, I can't. I can't say Vader. I'm gonna to Emperor. I'm gonna go ahead and give it give it to Job of the Hut. I'm gonna give it to Job of the Hut. He fucking. Uh, makes, uh, he makes people dance for him, and then when they don't want to dance for him, he sends them to a, a rancor, uh, he puts Leia in this really super sexy outfit. Sorry, what? What was I saying? Huh? Who'd I say? I just thought about Carrie Fisher Jabba. in that outfit. Jabba. I, I mean, he hunts... Man, man, I did 
did I ever. Uh, <laughs> I just did that for the slap. Uh, Gary Fisher's where I, how I Gary Fisher in that outfit. That's how I discovered a boner. I'm just gonna throw that out there. That's when my never mind. Anyway, um, Job of the Hut definitely because I mean he he I mean he wants Han Solo. You know he has mm-hmm. a bounty out on Han Solo. The Empire shit doesn't happen without Job of the Hut wanting uh, uh, Han Solo, and he gets him in frozen carbonite, mm-hmm. refuses to give him up, then tries to kill Luke and fucking Han and Chewie, uh, making him uh, uh, jump in the Sarlacc pit, all that crazy way to fucking mm-hmm. to execute somebody. They get slowly digested for a thousand years. He has no heart remorse. He fucking owns Tatooine, a whole planet. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get, give it to Job the Hutt. Just fucking asshole. He's a huge asshole. <laughs> it, it would be Vader if Vader doesn't turn at the end of Jedi, but Vader turns at the end of Jedi. The Emperor's plan is kind of lame. The Emperor's whole plan through this original trilogy is pretty much to turn yeah, Luke. Yeah, to turn Luke because he knows that Luke is, at, like, as of, as of right now, mm. like, Luke has the potential to be the most powerful. I mean, yeah. Of the Jedi. And like and That's like why. the Emperor's plan, the Emperor's ultimate plan is succeeded at the end of episode three. And so now this is like the Emperor, like at his peak, really, just at his peak from a power standpoint, just sitting around bored. He's just sitting around bored and trying to prevent him uh, trying to prevent uh, 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 his power being taken over. I mean, he's ar- he's already mani- he's already manipulated Anakin. Already manipulated um, Anakin into Vader. There's mm-hmm. nothing left to do. He's just sitting in his chair. Everybody he rules everything. You know, just fucking. It's kind of lame. But he's he's trying to, and like that's kind of like the. I feel like that's like one of the fears that's lurking in the background, though. It's there, but it's a real threat. You know, like, it's it's barely there, but it's a real threat that he could turn Luke by way of Darth Vader or otherwise. Best, uh, best hero. Best hero. Best hero. <sighs> I'm gonna go first. Okay. Princess Leia. Just for that, that outfit in Jedi with Jabba the Hutt alone. No, I'm kidding. Princess Leia, because... She was really the first female character to incite uh, that women do not need to be damsels in distress. Yeah. you got to think about that. New Hope came out in 1977. There weren't a lot of female characters that were strong, independent, mm-hmm. uh, uh, smart-ass. I, she, I, lo- I loved the character of Princess Leia mm-hmm. so much. Did I drink yeah. your coffee a second ago? I think you um, did. Anyway, I loved the character of Princess Leia so much that um, I was actually going to say Luke. I was going to say Luke because throughout the entire trilogy, he doesn't, he doesn't have any doubts. He just kind of springs into action. Oh, the rebels need my help. All right, let's do this. Like, and he convinces Han to come with him. And Han is the reluctant. Fight. Han is a reluctant hero, well, and that's I what mean, that's what keeps yeah. Han from winning this. He's a reluctant hero. He doesn't yeah. want to help, but like it gets him away from Jabba the Hutt. There's yeah. a hot chick that he kind of likes. I mean, it, well, well, I mean, and that's the story of his life. If you watch the solo movie, yeah. he's just a reluctant hero. But, but I mean, he go, he goes from one, you know, being selfish out for himself, et cetera, et cetera, to like, oh, I have friends now, yeah. and they need my help. Yeah. You know, like I, I could, I, I could help them win this war. But Leia, you know? Leia's like, just like Leia and. I see. I'm I'm realizing shit now, but, but I'm gonna keep. But I, Leia is just this com- powerful, strong, independent, mm-hmm. keeps everyone together, and just man, she's being she. They literally blew up Alderaan in front of her. Yeah, and she didn't even flinch. She gave him the wrong location, still, because it's that important mm-hmm. to her. Like the rebellion is that important to her. She let yeah. her own home planet blow up. She and she she was captured. She found a, an intelligent way to pass along the distress signal. She not kinda, only that, she kind of kicked all of this off. Not only uh, that, but it's revealed in this trilogy that not only is she, you know, fucking 
She's she's Luke's twin sister, and she has the Force. Yeah. And you gotta think, even watching Alderaan blow up. What's up? What's up? No, it'll it'll autofocus. Chill out. Chill out. Don't touch it. See, now it's just gonna take longer for. Oh man, I don't know what what happened. I didn't. It went to auto, it went to autofocus, and then it got moved. So we're gonna be blurry. Um, but anyways, it fucking. She, uh, <laughs> she says the force, so they blow up Alderaan in front of her, and, you know, fear, anger, whatever, it doesn't make her go to the dark side. It doesn't, she's not affected by watching Alderaan blow up, or Han being tortured, or anything like that. She's just her own, uh, that's how you fix it. She's just her own, uh, still, strong, independent, never a damsel in distress, mm -hmm. even when she is captured by Bubba Fett. And then what, how does she kill Boba Fett? She chokes him with a fucking chain, and that is boss. That is boss. Okay, best one out of the three. I think we all know what I'm going to say since I put Empire as my number one overall. But go ahead. What do you think your best one is? I was about to ask, did you even know I was asking you a question? Because you did. I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, okay. Fuck. I don't know. I get parts of Empire and Jedi mixed up, so I don't know. Well, okay. The one with Yoda in it. They both have Yoda in it. The one where Luke meets Yoda. Empire. That one. Empire's number one. <laughs> the prequels also have Yoda in it. <laughs> the one of the three, obviously. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, that's the original trilogy that started all. I think we hold these ones, because these ones are so good and ahead of their time. It's really, like, I think that's why we're having problems with the new trilogy and, and some of the prequels. But, like, I think George Lucas was just out of touch when he made the prequels. Yeah, well, these, going from these being ahead of their time yeah. to the prequels was I mean, a huge letdown. I mean, even the special mm -hmm. effects at this time were done with toys mm -hmm. and small little mini cameras, and then when we more practical effects yeah. than anything, then you get to the prequels where it's all special it's effects. All and special stuff. effects. Now uh, let's move on, and this will be our our final yeah our final uh, segment, and then uh, announcement uh, as far as what we will be streaming next year on the channel as far as video games go, the new trilogy. Now uh, Joey said. That Force Awakens was boring. That I guess that's all a matter of opinion and how you take the movie, because Force Awakens, uh, I, I feel, does a lot of fan service. I mean, when yeah. Chewie and Han show up, first of all, you're you're you they open with the villain Kylo Ren introduction of the new villain. He mercilessly okay. slaughters this fucking village. I don't I don't know how that's boring, and then you meet new characters. Uh, the comedy is different. Uh, so you have to take in the new comedy parts of it, and then uh, and then boom, here, here's Han, here's Chewbacca, and now here's the relationship with Kylo Ren. Here's Carrie Fisher seeing Han again for the first time. Like, oh my god! Like I I just I do not see the with the introduction of new characters and the reintroduction of old characters and the reunions. I don't see how this is how you can how you can and, and then the Snoke the introduction of Snoke and the and the overall plot and just how it's like the plot is parallel to New Hope uh, uh, you know like outsiders stuck on a trying to get off of a planet finds themselves in a war between a rebellious force and an empire it's the same formula as uh, as New Hope if you're gonna call this boring you might as well call New Hor I Hope boring because it's the same plot formula I mean it kind of starts off it starts off with a stormtrooper defecting come on I like, mean that, yeah. I, that's fantastic I love that and and you kind of you get in the beginning like in retrospect like you're like okay so he kind of understands the force like that's a little hint right there because Kylo Ren sees the fact that he's like not shooting well and that's see, what that that's what that tells me and now, knowing what I know now, and this but. is why seeing Rise of the Skywalker is so important, there's a reason behind that defecting. Mm -hmm. There's a reason within Finn behind that defection. I mean, it is the Force, but we think, oh, is Finn a Jedi? And sometimes, mm -hmm. I mean, now knowing what I know now about the Force, 
Sometimes it doesn't have to do with being a Jedi or not. Yeah. Sometimes it is just a feeling. Mm -hmm. So we get to the last Jedi, and this was trying to be its own empire. Um, the difference between this and the and the second and Attack of the Clones, all right, was Attack of, George Lucas did all the prequels. He didn't hand it off to someone like he did in the first yeah. trilogy. So this was J.J. Abrams handing it off. Ryan Johnson does a lot of things he didn't get permission for. Yeah. Didn't get approval for. Um, this one, I would say, is more boring. I would say, now, I would agree with Joey. If you, Joey, if you said this one was boring, I would agree with you. There's some uh -huh. interesting things about it. Yeah. Like, what well, Luke's going to do is really intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. And then well, Luke's final scene and everything is the best part. I, um, I agree. But this movie shows you just exactly Carrie Fisher... I'm sorry, what Princess Leia and the Force... Uh, what what How powerful Princess Leia is. This mm -hmm. movie really shows you that, yeah, there is something behind Princess Leia. She's not the only Skywalker that uses the Force... And in a very controversial scene, fucking poop goes to the airlock. I'm not going to give away full yeah. spoilers on that. That pissed off a lot of Star Wars fans. When I first saw it, I was kind of like... Well... But, at the same time, um, and I've mentioned this before, I watched Justice League before I watched Last Jedi. And Justice League was terrible. When I saw Last Jedi for the first time, I was like, eh... This ain't Justice League terrible. There were ideas I didn't agree with, like when they go to that casino planet. Yeah, that was kind of lame. It I was, mean, Benicio there was got, nothing, but we got a great character from we, Benicio yeah. Del Toro, but nothing was actually happening. Like, there's nothing actually yeah. got accomplished in Last Jedi. I would say Last Jedi is the poorest one of the three. I agree. Uh, now, best villain. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not a super fan of the way Luke went out personally, but personal opinion. That's the thing. I, no, like, I thought it was great. I thought it was great because, and a lot of people confuse this, that is not death by Jedi standpoint. It, that it, is immortality. It, that you, is going on into the plane of, of ascension. If you remember from uh, A New Hope, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, Obi-Wan was taught uh, in the prequels by Yoda at the end of Revenge of the Sith, saying Qui-Gon was in that place. Uh, Obi-Wan did the same thing in, in, New Hope. in New Hope. Vader doesn't cut him in half. Everybody just... Vader doesn't... He goes to a different plane of existence. Right before, Hader, right before Vader cuts him with the lightsaber, he goes into immortality. He becomes one with the Force. Yeah. Yoda lays down, one with the Force. Happens with Luke. I think people wanted Luke to take that lightsaber from mm -hmm. Rey and wreck shit for two hours. But there's the problem... When uh, Return of the Jedi ended, Luke, on an age basis, is like 26 or 27, all right? Luke in Last Jedi is about 60-something. That's like 40 years worth of shit going down. Yeah. And we don't know what happens between Jedi and, uh, and Force Awakens. That should be its own Disney Plus show. <laughs> but enough <laughs> shit happens that fucks Luke up. Yeah. Because imagine you're being told you're this chosen one, you're this chosen one, and then some shit happens with Kylo, you see a glimpse into the future, you're like, wait, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you've been told your whole life you're special, you're going to bring balance, and you think you've brought balance, and then here comes this fucked up shit, and you're like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, he starts training all these freaking kids. And training all these kids, and then one of them's smart. a goddamn, you know. I just feel like Luke would have been confronted, would have confronted Kylo face to face, not as a force projection. You see, here's the thing. He's uh, old. He's old. <laughs> he's old, and I, it's something we've learned about this forced projection. It's not really a, a, a projection of sorts. It is. It is. It is a new. It is a power of the force we did not uh, uh, take into account. Yeah, and, and and you see a lot of this in, in Last Jedi when Kylo and Rey communicate with each mm -hmm. other. Snoke but, says it's him. But it's we can't we can't talk about it. We yeah. can't talk about it until you guys see yeah. Rise of Skywalker. We can't Rise talk of about Skywalker. It. I feel like put some. But it's not things. a force projection. It is the ultimate power of the force. Yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is it is a confrontation face to face. It is. 
it is. It's like he's at two places at once. Mm-hmm. It is a face-to-face confrontation. And it was a bad... But he didn't die. A lot of people were like, oh, Luke died. No, didn't die. Became one with the Force. Became one uh, with the Force. And then we finally get to Rise of Skywalker, and we can't get spoiler... We gotta get spoiler-free with it. Um, Spoiler-free version. Holy fucking hell. What what a... It was great. It was great. We talked about it for a good half hour... After the movie was over, so. it's uh, you got to see it more times. But as like, but you know, Freddie Prince Jr. was just right. If you ever see that Freddie Prince Jr. rant he goes on, watch that because he's right. And when yes. you when you go in going when you go in thinking about that rant, and watching the movie, you're like, man, that Freddie Prince Jr. is fucking right. And then you see the little thing, and and you gotta remember, and J.J. Abrams takes the helm back. This wasn't supposed to be J.J. Abrams, but Ryan Johnson did some stuff like that Luke confrontation with Kylo, that type of confrontation. He did that without permission. He did, um, what else was done? The Force Kids at the end of Jedi, when they're looking up at the fucking stars in the movie. Those force kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with the, oh, with the oh, horses and oh, shit. And that was done without Laura permission. Laura Dern. Laura, Laura Dern. Dern, for some like, reason. She's a great Bitch, actress. go watch some raptors. What but are she, you doing? She was just, like, thrust in there, like, okay, we see. <laughs> Did you finally get my <laughs> Jurassic Park reference? Thrust in there? No. I'm, oh. just, I'm sorry. I'm just, like, you looked at me, and I'm like, wait, did I, is it too much? Is the fist too much? Laura Dern! Like, like, you see her in the background, but then all of a sudden she's, like, gonna, like, launch the ship at the new Death Star or whatever. It's like, it's like, A, that's great, but, like, the, we don't know anything about you, Laura Dern's mm-hmm. character. We don't know anything about you got her. got great hair. And she has wonderful hair. She has hair, great hair. Wonderful but, hair. But it's just, like, I thought she was gonna turn into an antagonist because she was such a biatch. But, I mean, it... it I don't know. Basically, biatch. her purpose was to sacrifice herself, and her purpose was to to kill the and the piss new off Death and Star. piss off uh, Poe, piss yeah. off Poe. And that was it. And it was just that was a feeble attempt at a plot device. I just I didn't like it. Now um, that was one of the things I did not like about that. Now, now we go into the rise of Skywalker. Spoiler free. Spoiler free. Spoiler free. J.J. Abrams takes it over. It has that Force Awakens vibe again. Does fan service, but not only does it do fan service, it just beautifully wraps the saga into a conclusion, Mm -hmm. and it basically breaks down what the Skywalker saga is all about. To where it's not this... To where the Skywalker saga isn't Star Wars. It's just part of Star Wars. It is just the story in this universe. And I think that's where we get lost as fans. Mm -hmm. We get lost as fans because we think Star Wars is the Skywalker saga. No, the Skywalker saga is this little tiny story in the Star Wars universe, just like the Mandalorian, Mm -hmm. just like Knights of the Old Republic, or just like Clone, just, just like any side story Like Star Wars, Rebels, anything that's canon that doesn't have Luke Skywalker in it, it's just a story. It's just a story in the Star Wars universe. Star Wars in itself is just a series of stories with, it's like Final Fantasy, alright? Every Final Fantasy is different, but all of them have chocobos. And that's Star Wars. Every Star (laughs) Wars saga is different, but it all has the Force and it all has good versus bad. Mm-hmm. And I think this I think the Rise of Skywalker does a good job in letting us know, hey, this isn't the end all be all of Star Wars. Star Wars is going to continue, but the Skywalker saga, this is the end of the story and and really this is what the story was all about at the beginning and here's its end and my favorite part about it Um, We all know Carrie Fisher died before this movie even filmed. They did a good job making you escape that thought. Like, I knew Carrie Fisher had died before this movie was filmed, Mm -hmm. but I would have never fucking known that at all. No, not at all. These scenes were shot. Well, they used deleted scenes from Last Jedi and worked around deleted scenes um, and did a fantastic job. To the point, like, one of the... 
G Gary Fisher is a big emotional. Gary Fisher, C three PO, big emotional shit in yeah. this movie with them. It's Gosh. great, fucking wonderful. Gosh. And uh. once the emotional parts, once the emotional parts and the and the psychological mm. parts hit, they don't stop hitting. This, I was I was literally just like. I disturbed the guy next to me because I was like, God, give me a break. I, Let's just move on to like a yeah. pod race or something. I can't take this anymore. I'm like, I'm bawling. I was just bawling. I, I was, I had tears in my eyes through a good portion of the movie. And it was good. It was, it was just amazing. Villain, best villain. Best villain out of this trilogy. We gotta leave Rise of Skywalker out. We can't reveal anything about it. So we can't give an award in Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. The only thing Rise of Skywalker, the only thing I'll give it is the best one of this of these three. It wins the best one of the trilogy. But that's the all the awards we can give it. So best villain out of Force Awakens and Last Jedi. Kylo yep. Ren. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with uh, the guy that Ray is giving the salvage parts to because he's such an asshole. He stole the Millennium Falcon. Uh -huh. He's he's not giving people the proper uh, food and shit, and he yeah. just runs J Jakku. Uh -huh. He's just a dickhole, and he's played by Simon Pegg. I did not know that. Yeah, played by uh -huh. Simon Pegg, who. Uh, uh, Simon Pegg, Kevin Smith, Dave uh, Filoni. All these people helped J.J. Mm -hmm. Abrams and Force Awakens were consultants for Force Awakens and consultants for Rise of Skywalker. So if you don't like these movies, you're basically saying Simon Pegg, Kevin Smith, and Dave Filoni don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> and I'm sorry, those are like the three biggest Star Wars fans on the planet next to J.J. Abrams. So, I mean, it would be like me consulting. Of course, I would, I would make Star Wars fucking wild. I'd throw in cocaine and fucking... Anyway. <laughs> I, I really dug Dan's version of Trilogy. I just don't understand why everyone was dealing methamphetamine. The Benicio Del Toro comes to take a, a Benicio uh, Del Toro's role. Get, uh, I think Benicio Del Toro should get an honorable mention yeah. for villain. Um, best hero. Mm, oh. mm, I'm going to give it to Leia. I'm going to give it to Leia because... That character that we awarded Best Hero to of the original, that I awarded to in the original trilogy, didn't leave. Despite all of it, despite everything that was happening in Force Awakens Last Jedi, and despite uh, everything that happened between uh, uh, Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens, Leia doesn't break. Leia is still Leia and strong and independent and fucking just badass. She doesn't I, have to lead the new rebellion. She doesn't have to lead the resistance, yeah. but she fucking does. I would say I would say Leia as well. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, just you know what she endured during the first trilogy, and and add on to that what she endured during the Force Awakens, the Last Jedi. Um, yeah. No. I mean, even. Yeah, just hand, hands down, Princess Leia. Yeah, and uh, let's see here. What else could we? What else could we award this trilogy? Um, well, we can't. I mean, we've given. We we both agree, Rise of Skywalker is the best one. Of the yeah, three. we yeah. both agree that, but we can't go into it. Uh, so, in the new year, I'd say a good time to talk about Rise of Skywalker is in February, beginning of February. February. We're gonna give. We're going to do uh, a whole other month of Nerd Alert in January. And then mm -hmm. the first week of February, we're going to come back. We're going to re-examine Rise of Skywalker. And that will be spoiler-filled. Because I think at that yeah. time, our whole audience would have watched it by then. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to fucking... Because you and I were walking out of there with, like, that's why this and this and this. Yeah, and we, we were made, we were figuring, this movie makes you figure shit out. We made a lot of connections. Lots of connections. And not just with, with New Hope uh, or, or anything in the original trilogy, but things in the prequels, too. Things in the mm -hmm. prequels we were connecting dots to. And it makes you change who you thought was, like, an important character. Mm -hmm. Great. So we're going to come it's, back to it in February. The 26th, the 26th, um, as part of Christmas, Misty got me a great Christmas present. Not just the Resident Evil 2 remake. She got me Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So, the day after... Wait, can I do the day after Christmas? 
Yeah, no, I'm doing a show. The Fuck. day after uh, It might be a Christmas Eve stream or a Christmas Day stream of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. No, you know what? It will be the 26th during the day. Jedi Fallen Order stream. We're going to play it. It's canon. Disney announced that it's canon, so we're going to fucking play that on the 26th. What is that? Uh, and then, that is a Thursday. Yeah, Next yeah. Thursday, we will be playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And if you've seen Rise of Skywalker and you want to come in and talk about it, cool. Just note that any big spoilers will probably get timed out or whatever. But we're going to play Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order on the 26th. Right. And then in the first week of so February 7th, we are going to revisit uh, Rise of Skywalker and do a completely no hold barred discussion on Rise of Skywalker. So go out and see it. It is definitely worth the money. It is definitely work, work, worth a night out at uh, the theater. And one more big thank you to William Sanamo and his family, the Humbugs. Go check out their Christmas album. They gave the soundtrack to our promo. Uh, <laughs> our, our <laughs> what? I'm just thinking about the humming. They gave a, 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 They helped us a lot. And they recorded a special Star Wars song, and that's their album, Hum for the Holidays. And, um, God, I can't think of anything else we need to do. I... This was, uh, this was a good, a good, good fucking episode. Uh, and I'm certainly sad that the Skywalker saga is over. Yeah. But we have the Mandalorian. We can always talk about the yeah. Mandalorian continuing, uh... Or the Mandalorian after season one's concluded. Season one of the Mandalorian is almost up. I think there's like one or two more yeah. episodes before the new year, and then that's it. And we can discuss the Mandalorian further. So Star Wars is not done. The Skywalker saga is done, but like I said, the Skywalker saga is not Star Wars. It is just a story within Star Wars. We still got Mandalorian. We still got the other. I'm sure there's other things coming that Disney's not telling us, but um, all in all. This story was decades in the making, yeah. and you gotta respect that. Um, and you know what? You know what all started this? I'm not even gonna say it was New Hope. It was when Vader, when Vader tells Luke, "No, I am your father." That's what started all of this. Dang. That little plot twist mm -hmm. started all of this. We're not here talking about six or eight other movies if it wasn't for that one line. That line changed the fucking game in Star Wars. That little plot twist right there of just Vader being like, oh, I'm your fucking dad. All of a sudden, we have decades worth of stories to go through. We have to get through the prequel. We have to get through Anakin, the story of Anakin. And then after that, well, what's... Was Balance of the Force really brought? I don't know. Here's three other movies. What a great... this. I hope the next saga doesn't take fucking 40 years to tell, though. Seriously, because I'd like to go through, like, two or three more sagas myself uh, without dying. I'm surprised, like, my dad is still alive. Yeah. I, <laughs> my dad, like, gave up on Star Wars. My dad thought he'd be dead right now. So now I gotta buy my dad, like, the three Star Wars movies on a Blu-ray disc set. Yeah. <laughs> And, and hope to God, like, he doesn't try to find some religious significance to it. But, what a story. This has been the Star Wars Nerd Alert Special. We are uh, not going to be here next Friday. We are going to be here at the New Year. The first one, the first episode of uh, the first Friday after 2020. Jesus. Which will be, wow, we're at 2020 already. So that will be January 3rd. Uh, we will be back uh, for everybody here at Nerd Alert. Everybody, like it's just more than me and her. Uh, for for Nerd Alert, I'm Dan. I'm Misty. Happy holidays, guys. Ralphie wishes you a happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll be streaming Destiny uh, throughout the week. Destiny, Borderlands 3 with Eric. All the good stuff uh, when I can. And then uh, the 26th during the day, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Until next time, guys, uh, happy, happy, happy holidays and New Year, and thank you for joining us. Peace!